In this video, the two class-based generic views we're going to talk about are the list view and the form view. Both take us up a level in simplifying our views. The list view is a nice class-based generic view because it takes a model object and gives you the ability to display the content in a template and paginate the data by only setting a few keyword arguments. Imagine showing a list of blog posts or even all your users in your database nicely paginated with only a few lines in your view. This is what's possible with the list view. The form view is used when dealing with forms. Specifically, we use it with class-based forms, which you either need a lot of flexibility with or usually isn't a model-based form. We'll look at using views with model-based forms in a later video. The first view we're going to look at is the list view. For this one, we aren't even going to touch our views file because we can do everything in our URLs file and just edit the template as we need to. It's a very simple to use and very powerful. First thing we're going to start with is obviously editing our URLs file. I first want to point out in line 7 I named our URL with the name equals task at the end. That's so that we can do our URL stuff a little simpler coming up in our templates. Since we're actually going to be dealing with our model inside of this file, we need to import our task model. We also need to import our list view. What we're going to do is we're going to actually transform this current view that we have, this current template view we have, into our list view. First thing we're going to do is we're going to rename template to list. And we're going to keep our template name because that's required by all of our views. So now let's take a look at the keyword arguments that we need to use for our view. The first one is we need to assign our model to this list view. So in this instance we're adding task and so whenever the list view wants to return an object to our template it's just going to do a normal task.objects.all. Since we want to do pagination we need to know how many results to have per page so we set a paginate by keyword. When we send all the data to our template, it sends it in the argument of object list. So you would do for something in object list in our template. That gets kind of annoying and kind of old, especially if you want to send multiple things to the template. So we're going to simplify this by giving the context object a name. And in this case, we're going to use the keyword context object name. and just give it the name tasks. And the final keyword we're going to deal with is query set. With query set, this is where we would actually set any custom select that we want to do. So if you want to order it by ascending or descending or something like that, you would actually do the command here. We're just going to do the default like it would do normally just so that we can have something there and you can see how it works. All right, we have our URLs done. Now let's go over to our template and do our editing there. First thing we're going to do is just delete this. Now we're just doing a simple for loop through our object. And note we have tasks because that's our context object name. And so here we would just do something like that and it would display it all out. I'm going to go ahead and paste in some code so this looks a little bit tidier. And there we go. That should output a list and make things look prettier on the front end. Next, let's deal with the pagination. Since this isn't a video on pagination, I'm just going to paste in the code for all the pagination stuff and point out a couple of things. If you're interested in pagination, please feel free to visit the GoJango website and watch the video on pagination so you get a better idea of what's going on. And this is our pagination code. I just want to point out on line 11 here, 
if we were doing this based on the pagination video and how that works, paginator would be part of the tasks object. In this case, the list view is sending a paginator object directly to the view, and so we use paginator instead of something like tasks.paginator. So that's just a slight difference to take note of whenever you're implementing pagination with the list view view. So now that we have this done, let's actually take a look at it in the browser. And there we go, we have our list of things to do and links to them. And they work. And we have our nice pagination going as well. I just want to make a quick note. While everything looked like it just worked, there was actually one minor problem in the code. And I just want to show you that right quick. It was based on the import. If you remember here on line three, I did an import for the list view. I actually did an import from the wrong location. I just needed to go in the django.views.generic and import the list view. That's the only minor change that I had to make before getting the, everything to work. Finally, we're going to look at the form view class based view, which is a nice generic view for dealing with forms. To get an idea of what it does, the official docs say that it is a view that displays a form, on error, redisplays the form with validation errors, and on success, redirects to a new URL. And that's exactly what it should do, and that's exactly what it does. I've already created the template and the form that we're going to use so that all we have to do is add a URL and create our template. The idea behind what we're going to do is we're going to create a suggestion form that will send an email. All we're going to do is create a URL and we're going to create our view and the processing inside the view is going to take place like normal but instead of sending an email we're just going to print out to the command line. So let's get started by doing what we normally do and editing our URL. So the first thing we need to do is we need to import our new view, which is as simple as that. Then we need to add our URL. And there we go. Let's work on our view next. First things first, we need to do our import. And now let's create our suggestion view class. And inherit from form view. Now let's go through our keywords. We're going to set form class success URL and our template name. First, we need our task form, which we also need to import. The next thing we need to do is set our success URL. I think we're just going to redirect to the home page for now. And then set our template name. And then finally, we'll override our form valid method. And next, we'll just print out what was posted to the back end. Then we'll do a return by calling our inherited form valid method.
And there we're good, we should be good to go, so let's take a look at it in the browser. Here we go, we have our form. Um, let's submit it to the back end. And there we go, we're back at our home page. Jump back over and hello is printed out to the screen. Hope you've enjoyed this episode of the GoJango screencast where we looked at the list view and the form view. I recommend you go ahead and start giving them attention and start using them. Please visit us at the GoJango website and subscribe to the RSS feed. You can also like us on Facebook and get involved with the conversation over there and stay up to date with the latest. I just want to thank you again for watching and have a great day.